In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Sendbird Calls using the Android Quick Start application. I'm Casey Kern. I'm the product manager for Sendbird Calls. Let's get started. So I'm assuming very little in this demonstration. One, I'm assuming that you have, you have a browser, that you have Android Studio, and that you've got a phone. Okay, so from Sendbird.com, I'm just going to hit the sign up button. We're going to make an account from scratch. I'm just going to make a burner account here for John Doe. All right, so I am now welcome to the dashboard and it's asking for, for an organization name. Now, if you're, a, if you're a company, this would be the company name. If this is a side project, this could be your, your own name or a family name or, or whatever it might be. Um, we'll just call it, I'm just gonna call it by the name here, John Doe. Okay, now my account is being created, and the first thing it's going to ask me here is to create an application. Now, each organization can have multiple applications. So, uh, since I'm demoing calls here, I'm going to choose a chat plus calls application, and I'm going to call this uh, call demo. I'm going to pick a region. It uh, doesn't really matter. There is some impact to latency and whatnot, uh, depending on what region you pick, but they function more or less in the same way. Okay, so my application is being created now. And you see that because I signed up for a calls enabled application, I get 20 free credits. Now credit is about the equivalent of a dollar. So I have 20 bucks to work with uh, in terms of, uh, of call credits and I have 30 days to try it out. Okay, I'm going to uh, skip this right now and look at, at what I have here in the dashboard. The first thing that you'll notice in this section right here is I have users and settings uh, below the overview. Let's take a quick look at users. You'll see it's blank right here. The user section is where I will eventually be uh, adding uh, test users uh, for demonstration purposes. In a production setting, a user would actually correspond to a human being. Uh, we're not going to look at chat right now, but let's look at the call section. There's two things here, call studio and call logs. The call logs still blank. This will be the place where you can verify that a call has been made or that a call is ongoing uh, on this application. The call studio is what I want to look at right now because this is how we get up and running with calls in a very, very rapid manner. The main thing that we have to do here is set up test users and then connect those users to the right clients so that we can make and receive calls. So our objective here is to make our first call. So let's go ahead. First thing it's asking me to do here is to download Sember calls on my mobile device. We're just going to go with Android for now. So on Google Play, if you search on the App Store, just search for Sember calls, you can find the app and load it onto your phone. So um, I am doing that right now on my phone, and you'll see that I will have it um, loaded here on my on my phone and we will figure out what to do with that just in a little bit so the next thing to do is to create a user for the phone booth and this is kind of like the operator uh, you'll see in just a little bit in a little bit there's going to be a little phone booth type section of the dashboard that you can actually make and receive calls in in this in this actual view let's have a look so first we need to pick a user ID. I'm just going to call this operator. Nickname, this is the, the label that the user will be known by. So I'll do that one with the capital. Okay, now I need a contact. As an operator, I need to be able to call someone. Now from a, since we're just doing a demo here, this will kind of be a, a, a virtual user. Let's just call it user A and we'll uh, name it user A like that. Okay, now what it's asking me to do is this user A that I just generated, I need to sign in as that user. So I just explained that the operator is basically this dashboard view right now. However, user A is gonna be logged into to my phone. So um, you will see that I am able to sign in with a QR code on, on my phone here. First thing it's asking is sign in with a QR code. And this QR code is available here on the dashboard. So I'm just going to scan it right here. And what it just did was it logged me in as user A. 
So I am I am done here. Uh, so what this did is set me up with operator and user A. Here's the phone booth right here, and you'll see that the operator is functioning right here in this phone booth, and I'm able to make a call to user A. I could type in the the name right there, or I can just hit the uh, the voice call button right here. So what this is going to do is it's going to start making a call, and I've got an incoming call notification right here on the app, which I'm going to accept. And now I have an ongoing call. Now while this call is ongoing, let me go to the call logs here and check current calls. You can see that there's a call going on between the operator and user A. So I'm going to end this call now. I want to try something else. Let's say that you don't have a phone right now, but you still want to set up a user that you can call from the phone booth. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create a new user. And this is going to be user B. Okay. Now, if I don't have a mobile device, I can still sign in. We'll just select sign in on the, on the web. And what this will do is give me a URL. And I'm going to open a new window here. And I'm going to paste that URL into it. And what you'll see happens is it opens up a window very similar to what I saw on my mobile device. In fact, it functions the, the same way. If I wanted to call the operator as user B, I will do that. And you'll see that uh, now I can accept the call right here from, from user B. So again, no mobile device was actually required there. And if we check our call logs now, we can see the first call that we made, and then the one where user B from, from the, the web quick start just called the operator. OK. Let's revisit the users. This was blank before. As I've created these users, the, the operator and uh, user A and user B, they have now appeared as users and I can I can use them uh, and, and they function as users inside the Sendbird system. Okay, so now you're probably wondering, okay, well this is great, I can I can make calls, I can set up users, but how do I build this into my app? That's really what we're trying to, to get to arrive at. Well you'll see a link here for the quick start app on GitHub and we're gonna select the the Android one. Okay, this is an open source sample which uh, demonstrates how the Sendbird Calls SDK is implemented into a, a functioning application. All right, so what I'm going to do here is first have a quick look at the, the readme here. You'll see that in order to get started, we need to create a Sendbird application. We've done it. We need to create some test users. We've done it, and now we need to specify the application ID in the code base. Let's do that right now. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to need to first clone this repository. To do that, I am going to pull up Android Studio. And I'm going to select Get from Version Control. OK, and I'm just going to paste the, UR, the URL right there, and it will create a new folder for me on my local machine and we'll create the project in Android Studio. So here is what it looks like. Let me expand this a little bit so we can get, get a good look at it. Okay, so uh, here we are inside of, let's uh, get to our project here. Okay, so this repository is cloned. We have the code base locally. And again, we need to specify the application ID. So first, we need to find where base application is. Let me show you, show you where that is. Uh, if we go here to app, if we go here to SRC, in our source, into our 
package, we've got base application right here. Now, one thing to note up front is if you check your imports, there is a chance that you may see some, some errors occurring here. One thing uh, to verify if you do is go to the SDK manager up here and verify that you have API level 29 and 30 checked and, and those dependencies in place. Uh, if you do, then you should have no problem being able to open this and uh, to compile it. Now you will see right here, here is the, uh, the app ID, your application ID needs to, needs to go in right there. Okay, so um, let's go back to our dashboard and to our overview. And this application that we have created has a, has a unique ID right here, the application ID, which I'm going to copy. And then I will paste right, right there. Okay, so we were able to find the application ID here in the overview section. It's also in the URL of the dashboard there. So uh, if you if you want to get it from a without going to the overview, you can also find it there. Okay, so that's that's really all that I have to do there. What what I've done is basically made this cloned repository. I've made it mine because when it runs, it's now going to connect into my application. When it's in that application, it's going to know about these users. Okay, so let's do a, a quick look at, at what's going on here. Uh, this application ID is then passed into the, uh, the initializing functions, which the first thing that they do is, is set up listeners, uh, primarily listeners to be able to receive incoming calls. Now, I'm not gonna do a deep dive into the architecture of this application. Uh, however, all of this code shows quite clearly how the uh, the SDK is implemented and and how the various functions and listeners and event handlers are put in place. So looking again here at our import dependencies, you will see uh, you know the sender call object is is imported and then much of the call based logic is handled through, through this and how it's connected to the UI and how it uh, interfaces with the rest of the app. You kind of have to look through this sample app to see, to see how that's done. Okay, so now that I have my app ID coded into here, I'm going to run this in an emulator. Okay, so I've got a pixel emulator here. I'm gonna compile it and run it. The application is compiled uh, and is running in the emulator. And we have the same view that we that I actually saw on my mobile device. Okay, so it's the same deal here. I need to sign in as a user in this emulator in order to make and receive calls. So because this is an emulator, I can't actually scan a QR code. I can't put this in, in front of the screen. What I'm gonna do here is, is first, uh, I'm gonna create a, another user call this user C and I'm going to log in to the emulator with this user and I'm going to do it with sign in with ID okay now you'll see that the application ID is already coded in okay so I don't have to do anything there the user ID is what I need to specify user C sometimes the emulators have a little time with resource allocation okay so user C is what I'm putting in here I'm gonna leave access token blank you'll see it's optional let me just give a quick word about access tokens if you go to your settings you can set security settings that require an access token in order for a user to log into your application. What this does is it prevents unauthorized users to be able to log in as a user if all they know is the app ID and the username. For demo and testing purposes, that's usually not required, although we do recommend it for production. So because we're just doing, uh, doing testing here, we're gonna leave that 
blank. Okay, I'm going to sign in. Okay, and I'm going to grant it the uh, permissions for the microphone and the camera. Okay, now I am logged in as user C. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make a call to the operator. from the emulator. Look at that. I'll answer the call. And now I am talking from my dashboard in the web browser to the Android app in the emulator. Now I can do something similar with respect to user A that's in the mobile app here from the emulator. I will put in user A and I will give them a call. Okay, then I got an incoming call notification here. I accept it. And now we're, we're in a call here. All right, let me end that. So ultimately, you see that we have four points of entry. We have the phone booth, which is linked to the dashboard account. And you can use this whenever you're in the Sendbird dashboard. And in our case, we have user A, which is signed in as a mobile device. And we did that using the Quick Start app, which was on the Play Store and the QR code. And then we have user B. Which, is, uh, which we did have signed in into a web browser uh, using that special link. And then user C, which we have loaded into our Android application, which we compiled from the code base. Now, one little thing right here is if you do want to edit the nicknames here and say that you know, this is the emulator and this one is Oops, I did not mean to remove it. This one is the browser. And this one is mobile. That can clarify things a little bit. Uh, you'll notice that the user IDs are all the same, but now we're just referring to them uh, differently via their nickname. Okay, so the uh, now that we've seen how the emulator can, can function with this uh, compiled app. The task for you now is to identify in your application where you want the calling function to appear. And then using the examples that you see here, you can poke around with uh, the various components of this application. And uh, in many cases, you'll be able to copy and paste large portions of it. You may have to adapt it slightly uh, in order to match your, your UI. But this gets you started not only on the user administration and the application administration and the account administration, but also in the actual code base as you work towards uh, creating your app. So I hope this has been helpful for you. And I look forward to seeing what everyone manages to do in building in-app calls into their Android applications. And I should note that there are Quick Start applications for iOS and JavaScript as well. And the code bases for those are also on GitHub. So happy coding.